everybody, Two Passions Fishing here. I'm here at the laundry mat here in Auburn and doing my work clothes. For some of you know, I work at a foundry. It's dirty, filthy dirty. So my wife doesn't let me do the laundry at home in our washer. I couldn't go home and dry it, but I just can't wash it. But you can't blame her, because if you know what kind of work environment that I'm in, it's filthy, the sand and the dirt sticks to my clothes and it makes a mess of the washer. You can actually kind of destroy it. So here I'm at the laundromat. It's one of these places where I do a lot of my witnessing and sharing the Lord. Opportunities here again, you know, everywhere I go, I want to share Christ and uh, redeeming the time. Well, this ain't about the laundromat or a whole lot about washing my clothes where I should wash my We're about some of my personal business here about washing my clothes. But what I do want to share with you is that I get a lot of questions on why I street preach. You know, and just a bunch of different questions I get on the street. I'm gonna share them with you. And if you, I'm gonna say this in the beginning of the video and towards the end of the video. If you have any questions towards on this video, leave a comment on the end of the video. And uh, maybe you have some certain personal questions you, you want to ask me, just leave it on the leave a comment on the bottom of the video, and I'll get right back with you. But a lot of the questions that you ask ask of me in the streets. Is I'm gonna try to. I don't have these any any special order, any special question. You know, number one, number two. So these are just questions that are all mixed up. So um, one question comes up to, to my mind is why come out here and preach? You know, I get a lot of those people ask me questions. We have all these church buildings, filled with a bunch of people. Why come out here and preach? You know, you know why disturb people with the gospel when they have all these churches in America? Well. Bible commands us to go out and minister and preach the gospel. And I'm going to share a scripture here with you. One scripture that comes to my mind is Luke 14, 23. It says, Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in so that my house may be full. It's just like, just like a farmer. A farmer is not going to wait for his harvest to come into his barns or come into his house. A farmer's gonna go out and pursue the harvest. A farmer's gonna go out and go after the harvest. The harvest it himself. He's gonna labor into the fields, bring the harvest to him and to the barns. And that's the same way when it comes to the souls. Christ has called us to go out into the harvest. You know, the scripture comes to mind says, How great is the harvest? You know, the Bible says, How great is the harvest? And there's only a few labors. And you know, when I'm out there street preaching, that's just about 100% right. Uh, wow, I don't say about it. It is 100% right. Because um, there's a very few people out there ministering and, and reaching out to people. We've, uh, I think we've lost a lot of that in our churches. Um, it's evangelism. And a lot of people are afraid of, of evangelism. You know, people uh, just just totally, you know, not, you know, not bold to go out and do it. But I don't want to hang on that because I can try to run with that. So I'm going to try to answer these questions for you. There's another uh, verse that comes to my mind to that same question, why go out and preach? So Mark 16, 15 says, go into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I think it's a uh, it's a command for us all to go out and to minister to some form. Not everybody, you know, are pastors. Not everybody's gonna go out and preach the gospel in the streets. Um, but there's, uh, there's you know, one-on-one -on -one family members, friends, um, your uh, co-workers. Go out and minister to them. Share, share the good news of Jesus Christ. This is something that shouldn't be kept to ourselves. This is something that we should deliver and tell people. I mean, I always uh, like to refer to cancer. You know, we're out there doing research and we're out there doing all kinds of uh, different things in laboratories trying to find a cure for cancer. And, uh, you know, if I had that cure for cancer and I was the only one that had it, I surely would not keep it to myself. I mean, the first thing I would do is go to these hospitals and go to these, these children's hospitals that are suffering with this disease, this horrible leukemia, cancer disease, and, and give it to them. As soon as I have, have I recognized that I have a uh, cure for it, I would give it to them. I would, and everybody else who has cancer, I would I'll let them know that I got the cure. I have the cure right here for the cancer. And you know, I'm sure, you know, that's a sensitive um, um, conversation because there's, you know, I'm sure everybody's got a member in their family. Everybody's got a member in their family that has uh, either either has cancer or has suffered with cancer and died with cancer. Um, I have several in my family, and I'm sure everybody's got that um, in their family. And 
So by saying that, there's there's a lot of people in their family, friends know that there are people in their life, in their family that has um, they don't know Christ. There are those who are without Christ. There are those who don't have or know Christ. So same as that, you know, that all of us are that know somebody that has died of cancer and suffered cancer. We all we all know that there's somebody, and many of us know that there's someone or some many some somebody's I should say that don't know Christ. We need to tell them about Jesus. He's our only hope um, of this life. So I can go on with that. Isaiah 58, 1, um, with that same question, goes says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and tell my people their transgressions, and to the house of Jacob their sins. Let's go to the next question. Question two, do you get paid for doing this? And that's one of my top questions I get. I get a lot of people asking me, you know, I'm out there in a freezing cold year around and get rained on. It's like, there's no, no, no other way in your, out of your mind you're doing this for free. I mean, there's got to be someone maybe sponsoring you or doing something to get you out here. He says, no. Um, that's something I, I don't allow myself. I mean, if somebody wants to give or, or give, give towards my ministry, I mean, I won't say no to it, but it's something I don't advertise. It's something I don't uh, promote. Um, it's something I full heartedly want to do it for uh, free because I think it's a, it's a way of keeping people from judging you in a way because you're, you're doing it for money. So I try to avoid that. But when it comes to people wanting to give to my ministry, that's fine. I mean, I, I, that's a blessing from God. That's awesome. But what I like to tell people that tell me that hey, when you know, ask me this question, do you get paid for doing this? I usually say, well, I'm usually, I'm usually paid. I'm already paid up. I'm paid for by the blood of Christ. So, you know, freely, freely, freely I've received, freely, freely I want to give. You know, the Bible says, I want to freely give, because I was freely given the uh, salvation of Christ, the payment, for, the payment for my sin, the death on that cross, the payment for my sin. You know, without remission of sin, or without, without the uh, redemption of blood, um, the pouring out of his blood, there would be no forgiveness of sins. So with that said, let's go to question three. What Bible do I use? You know, that's that's a really uh, good one. I mean, there's a lot of different versions out there. There's a lot of different uh, Bibles that a lot of pastors use. Um, when it comes to like the NIV, the New, New International Version, that's a popular version. Um, there's also uh, the English Standard Version, uh, the American Standard Version. There's a bunch of different versions out there, the Revised Version. The version I like to, like to use is the one that's closest to the, the original text. And uh, it's the New King James Version. Um, I did start off with the King James Version, but the New King James Version is very, very cool. I mean, because it's, it's in our language, it kind of takes the these and thous out of it, but it, it speaks kind of like the way I'm speaking now. Um, it's a little easier to understand. Um, it's got uh, a lot of the hard lettering out of it. It makes it a little easier to read. Uh, so the New King James Version is probably one of my best, my favorite versions that are out there. And so, I mean, with, that, with that being said, if I was out there, Say, say I was out there with a new, new international version. Um, before, I, before I go on, a lot of people think, well, what's wrong with the new international version, NIV, um, different versions out there? If you study that Bible, um, that Bible has, I'm guessing, 50 to 60 different verses pulled out of the text in different chapters of the Bible and put off to the side. You know, a lot of these, a lot of these Bibles are money making Bibles. A lot of people put names on them. People try to change the Bible, the color, the texture, the writing, um, try to do different things to it to make it look like it's a new Bible and try to make money off of it. That's just simply said. Um, so try to stay close to the original text I mean, when it comes to the, to the Bible. And the New King James Version is the best um, I, the best text, the best version that, that I studied, that I use. And I also use it to protect myself too in a way because if I was out there in, in the streets preaching from the NIV Bible, and, and I had my opponent, so to say, a heckler, so to say, come against me, and I would start reading from a chapter, say a verse, a chapter, and he would read from his, and he finds that some of the verses in, my, in the Bible is actually missing. You know, he's gonna think, well, what's going on with your Bible? Because my Bible has all the verses in my chapter, and your, your Bible, your chapter, and your Bible has like two or three verses missing. That's just gonna cause all kinds of arguments and, that, and then I would have to go and try to find a way out of that so I want to study myself through and study myself where I want to stay close to original text that's one reason why I don't go out there and use these Bibles I wish these Bibles were even on the shelf 
NIV, which they weren't even on the market, which the pastors don't even use them. Um, they're just, they're just, no, they're no good Bibles the way I look at it. They shouldn't be used. Okay. Next question. Where all do I preach? Well, where, where do I preach? I preach where there's living, there's living souls. Um, I do a lot of my preaching like in fairs, um, street, street corners, anywhere there's people. Um, I do my, do a lot of my preaching. I know in the winter time I'm a little slow with my preaching, um, with the windows being up in cars and vehicles, it's cold out. So I do have my sign that helps a little bit, that plants a lot of seeds. And so that, that with that being said, um, plain and simple, I just go preach with those people, with their souls. Uh, next question. I got this question written down, make sure I got them all remembered. I had a few people come up to me, especially the other people come up to me asking me, are you preaching to the choir? Um, Preaching to the choir. I actually have to look that up. What's that really mean? Preaching to the choir. And what it really means is that you're are you preaching to, to people that seem to already know this. You know, well, if you really study and talk to people, uh, a lot of people don't know the gospel. You'd be surprised. And I'm talking even church going people. People who are in the church do not know the gospel at all. I mean, they listen, they depend on what the preacher says because, you know, he's got a uh, master's degree and and a PhD, so they you know, depend on what he says. But you, know, when you really got to really got to be a uh, uh, a Berean in this, and you really got to study yourself and make sure you know is this pastor, or this person talking to me in the scriptures. You know, is he speak? Is he speaking scripture? So, all right, we got here six. What religion are you? You know, what religion? What church denomination am I? I don't uh, support any church denomination. I'm not of any church denomination. I grew up Amish and uh, Mennonite. Um, I mean, I'm not you know, knocking them down or anything or pushing them down. God just called me out into to minister and preach the goodness of Jesus Christ. Um, the whole core of the message. You know, when we go to different churches, different denominations, um, you know, the whole core of their message is Jesus Christ. And it should be. It should be the whole uh, core of this message should be Jesus Christ. And what really separates, is sadly to say, but what separates a lot of churches is the traditions in the churches. You know, you know, some of these churches are a whole different traditions. You know, how a woman should dress and how she look, or this is how we should wash our hands. It's kind of like the way the Pharisees were. You know, the Pharisees added hundreds of different traditions to the commandment of Moses, and that's why they were so blinded. They were so blinded by their traditions they couldn't see the Son of Man, the Son of God, right before them, because they're so blinded by their traditions. And that's what I'm afraid of so many times today. As it grows even worse, that many churches are going to be blinded by the real Jesus, which is already happening today, is uh, by the traditions are going to be blinded by the truth of the goodness of Jesus Christ. And I've been uh, involved with a lot of churches like that. That uh, you know, the traditions seem to be higher up, standards are more important than God, and it's it's like almost like they don't realize it, like they're blinded from it. So I have to be really careful with this. But basically, what I tell people, I'm not. I mean, nothing against religion. I am. I am the religion. I am very religious man. Nothing against that, but uh, nothing against that word. Nothing wrong with that word, but uh, I'm just a man who's born again, God fearing, um, hating sin, every ounce of it, hating all the worst of the worst of evil, but loving the sinner for Christ. You know, I'm just a just God fearing man. Okay, next question. Uh, so, what types of people do you preach to? <laughs> I actually get that question pretty often asked. Do I, do, I just preach the, do, I certain, do I preach the certain kinds of tattooed, blue haired, um, rock and roll? You know, do I preach the, the ones in the worst of the worst sinners? I said, no, I preach to all those who are lost without Christ. You know, I don't care if you uh, wear a three piece suit with a tie. I don't care if you own a company, a CEO. I don't care if you're, uh, you're a uh, man with uh, seven or eight figures at your salary year. You know, if you're a sinner, you know, you need to know God, you need to know Christ. Uh, God sent His Son Jesus Christ for everyone. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, God is for everyone. God, and also the Bible says, He desires that none should perish, but come to the come to the repentance, come to know Him. So I preach that every soul, whether black, white, red, uh, brown, yellow, skin, or whatever color your skin or uh, origin you are, or what culture you come from, this gospel. Is for you and everyone. Okay, question A. Do you think you're getting people saved with your bullhorn, your sign? Well, 
you know, I don't, I, I see some results. I, I had some people come to Christ through my preaching, but you know, you'll see all the results. You know, you leave that up to God, the Holy Spirit, uh, but the seeds are planted. You know, we, we as street preachers and preachers of the gospel, pastors in the churches, um, you know, we're seed planters. We go out and plant the seeds and God does the rest. You know, God will come in and, and uh, hopefully that seed will grow. But uh, the Bible does talk about, you know, the farmer, you know, how he lays the seed in some rocks and lays the seed you know, on some soil and doesn't go deep enough. Uh, read that chapter. It's a good chapter uh, on the seed uh, uh, planting. It uh, basically talks about the Word of God. It talks about the Word of God where, you know, the seed is being planted, where people hear the Word of God. Um, you know, what's what happens, what, what are they going to do with that seed? You know, it's totally up to them. You know, their choice, what they make. When they, when they hear the seeds of the gospel being sown in their heart, sown in their soul. Uh, here's, a, here's a good verse. Isaiah 55, 6, 7 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Uh, let the wicked uh, forsake his way and, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let, let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him. For he is you know, to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Well, I know I have, I have a few more questions. Those are usually the top questions, not in any order. But those are the, a lot of the questions I get asked in the streets. And uh, so if you have any question um, besides these, you know, I, you know, may I don't have written down or shared with you. If any question, just leave a comment below this video, and I'll get right back with you. And uh, if there's uh, any questions about the Bible, any questions about, you know, how to get saved, how do I know God, leave a comment, and I'll get right back with you. So I, I try to uh, I try to respond to every one of my texts, or every one of my messages, every one of my uh, uh, comments on, on the bottom of my video. So uh, I'm open to any, any way that comes to me, I'll respond to you. So with our phone call, or video, whatever, I'll respond to you. But I want you to know Christ. Well, this is this is Jamie, Two Passions Fishing. Thank, thank you for watching. I appreciate you all. Remember, God's love, and He loves you. Come to know Jesus Christ today. Do not forsake Him. Do not reject Him. Because today's the day. Can be your day to stand for a holy God who loves you and sent His Son Jesus Christ to die for your sin. Know Him today.